Good evening, board. I want to once again congratulate our new board members. Uh, it is going to be an amazing journey that we take together as a team of eight, and congratulations to our new board officers. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, but it is exceptionally amazing work that we are gifted to have this opportunity. And, and we're gifted to do it here in Montgomery ISD. And I felt that way coming in as the new superintendent. And I feel even more strongly having been on the job uh, for the last several months. And so when I was going through the process of being interviewed and then being named the lone finalist, uh, I promised the board that I was not going to come in with the plan. I was going to come in with a plan of entry. And by that, I mean a commitment to listen and to learn and not to be so presumptuous that the things I've done in prior districts will work here uh, or the things I learned in the private sector immediately have to be implemented. But to take this <coughs> truly amazing district to listen to our stakeholders, listen to our public, listen to our employees, and to figure out that journey of where we are to where we want to be, and to do that collaboratively, collectively, and positively together. Now, sometimes when you report out on your entry plan, people are like, wow, you've come up for a couple months and all you've done is listen. Uh, and I have done a lot of listening, and I'm going to speak to that in a second. But we've also done a lot of action, and uh, I'm very proud of our team. Uh, both those individuals that report to me as my senior staff and our principals and our employees, it's been an unprecedented year uh, with COVID-19. And everything that we thought that we knew about opening schools, uh, about conducting elementary and secondary campuses and getting our students on a pathway to graduation, everything has had to be rethought. And so there's been a lot of action. Uh, as the new superintendent, you put a high watermark on having a great school opening. Well, we had to have four. Uh, we not only introduced students all remotely, but then had phase openings of pre-K and kindergarten, then welcoming sixth and ninth graders, and then welcoming all of our students back who chose in-person traditional instruction on September the 8th, as well as continuing to serve those students who chose remote instruction. We made a commitment to this board and this community. We were not going to try to be perfect, but we were going to try to be excellent, and I could not be prouder of our employees we have one of the highest percentages of students who have returned for in-campus traditional instruction, not only, I believe, in Montgomery County, but uh, anywhere in the state of Texas. And we've had a very low rate of having to quarantine uh, students and keep them home because of COVID. Now, I say that knocking on some wood because we know uh, everything is happening across our state and country with COVID. Uh, but again, there's an incredible diligence to the safety of our students and staff. Additionally, we have tried to look at all the ways to better serve our students, whether they're in person or remote, and that's been everything from utilizing fewer platforms to make it easier on our parents, to ordering additional devices, to trying to increase our capacity to deliver technology in a better and more robust way, and then to listen to our employees and try to do everything we can to ease their burden. So being able to find the way to have dedicated remote teachers at the elementary level so that teachers are not having to do a hybrid instructional model but then having that hybrid instructional model certainly having to happen at the secondary level, but then thinking out of the box, realizing that listening to our teachers, what they needed most was time, and introducing recently the, con, uh, the initiative of an, uh, a late arrival Wednesday, which so far we're hearing a lot of positives about. We have continued to the work uh, that was started prior to my arrival as a superintendent, but we were able to present a balanced budget to this board, something that has been incredibly important. And then to go a step further and to uh, have the board vote on raises uh, that were desperately needed. And as I said at the time when we presented it, uh, it's been a lot of work to get to where we felt comfortable presenting raises, but that's a down payment on the work that we know we have to do. Uh, we finished the work that was started prior on the board's goals, going from four uh, goals to five that you voted on tonight. And now the work begins on the strategic plan. And in that time, we also hired a new director of communications who is with us tonight, Mr. Justin Moreno. And we have our new chief of police, uh, Chief uh, Stephen Phillips. And so lots of things happening, more. Uh, but really, this is about the entry plan, and it's about my commitment of listening and learning, and what I want to do tonight is share some of the many, many things that I've learned coming in as your new superintendent. So Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand 
then to be understood. I'm disappointed Dr. Bartlett isn't here tonight because uh, her school was just recognized as a lighthouse school. Uh, much about the, uh, of the uh, uh, pathways that Dr. Covey has introduced and seven habits of highly successful people. Uh, but this has always been something that resonates with me. A lot of times when we say we're listening, we're really listening just enough to tell people what we think rather than listening to what they think. And if we are going to be the board and team of eight and superintendent that this community deserves, then our commitment to serving has to be a commitment to listening. And so I've tried to do that. I have been to every school multiple times, meeting with the principals, meeting with the administrative staff, meeting with guidance counselors, meeting with teachers, meeting with all staff, uh, getting out uh, across our central services, uh, meeting with each and every PTO, sometimes in person, sometimes remotely, and then uh, just a tremendous treat getting a chance to meet our student groups, uh, our boosters, uh, just doing a lot of listening about what people love about this district and what they think could be better. We've had dedicated town halls. We've had a number of different town halls, and that's been a little bit different in a world of COVID because we haven't had as many as we'd like to have, and we've had to socially distance and uh, do all the things that we have to do. But again, wearing a mask doesn't mean we can't listen, and so each of those town halls has been a gift. And then meeting with many, many individuals in small groups, whether it's uh, service organizations like Rotary or, or uh, Alliance Club or uh, larger opportunities like the Chamber. Any group that has said we'd like you to come and, and to tell you what we think about the school district, I've tried to be there. Uh, I have, I think at this point, had 328 individual conversations with different stakeholders in Montgomery ISD, current employees, former employees, parents, former parents, uh, anyone that cares about our district that said we'd like to talk. Uh, I have tried to listen and I want to thank our board because uh, you've said hey would you mind talking to this person and I've talked to that person they've given me three other people to talk to and again that listening has truly been a gift. So as I think about this opportunity to come and listen and learning as a superintendent and as a leader you have to be able to say this is where our organization is this is how we arrived at this point and then more importantly where is our organization going. And so as I came in um, to our school district and tried to get a better understanding of this district that so many people love uh, and what is the mission and vision of this school district, uh, I struggled a little bit trying on our website, and I've talked to Justin about that already, to find the specific vision and mission. But as I tried to look through the words, it really seemed to me that we were making a pledge, an oath, a commitment to being about every child, serving them with excellence and preparing them for the future. So my question was always, what does that mean to you as a stakeholder? And, you know, a lot of times people want to tell you all the things that should change. And a lot of times people want to tell you all the reasons why things should be different. And there has to be a combination. We are going to go on a journey of change. But one of the things I learned a long time ago, the only people who jump up and say, I want change are wet babies. And so you have to make the case for change. I, I see you laughing under there, Dr. Fuller. Um, <laughs> I'm here all week, by the way. Um, so you have to make the case for change, and you have to make sure that people feel that there is input into that change, and it's not the change that I think is best, but it's the change collectively that we, as a board and a governance team of eight, and our community feel is what's in the best interest of our students. We want to be the premier school district in the state of Texas, and those have been great words. I love the words, but now we have to define what does it mean to be the premier not a premier, but the premier school district in Texas. And we're really good. We are really a good school district. But if you've read the book, uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins, Jim, he puts forward the proposition that good is the enemy of great. And we don't want to be great for platitudes and awards. We want to be great for just about 9,000 reasons. And that's the students that we have the honor and privilege of serving. So as I've met with these groups, more often than not, we've engaged in what's known as a SWOT activity, asking what do you as stakeholders believe are the strengths of our district, what are the weaknesses, what are the opportunities to improve uh, that may be simply correcting the weaknesses or it may be areas that were good but could be better, and then what are threats that we need to be cognizant of. I have been astounded, having done this several times in the public sector and some in the private sector, the consistency of what this community, whether it was employees, former employees, administrators, private sector, uh, faith-based community, whoever service uh, leaders across our community have said about our school district. 
Overwhelmingly, every time I ask a question, what's great about our school district? It's our teachers and our employees, without question, every time. Followed up by uh, great students, engaged students that we're privileged to be able to serve. And then leadership, whether that's our campus principals, streamlined district leadership, our instructional coaches, but great leaders who want to support great teachers and support staff in service of students. That there is strong community support. And I have said this from the time of coming in. It's not unusual to find a community that loves its school. We love our bears, we love our lions, but even those people that support the lions or support the bears, they all still, well maybe not Judge Mac, but everybody supports Montgomery ISD. And we can't take that for granted. The minute we start taking it for granted is the minute we lose it, and we can't do that. And then also recognition that we have high quality facilities, not necessarily where we want them, but we have 10 campuses that we can be proud of, and we've got a great start on making them even better. Now we've got strengths, and we've got a tremendous number of strengths, but there have been identified weaknesses, and I think tonight it's appropriate as we present a budget to you and, a, and an audit that is not what we wanted to. But the budget process has been identified as a challenge for our school district. The inability to have a balanced budget over the last several years, a perception of a lack of transparency. How do we develop the budget? Who made those the priorities? And why uh, have we not made competitive wages for our employees a stronger portion of our budget? I say this all the time. Our school budget is no more complicated than a household budget. We decide what's important, we look at how much is coming in, we decide how much is going out, and we prioritize the most important things. And we have to demonstrate to our community what we see as a priority, why we feel those are the priority, and budget to those things. Technology has not been lifted up as a strong point, and I am very proud of our team. Uh, there's been a lot of changes very quickly uh, to our technology, but everything from a lack of infrastructure to a lack of devices to a lack of training for our employees, we need to do better in a 21st century model of instruction around technology. Uh, lack of processes and systems. If you think about our school district like a house, the front of the house with the teachers and the principals and the staff are great, but the back of the house, the processes and systems for how we support the front we have a lot of work to do, and that's work that we will do together. Communications, uh, that commitment to listening, that commitment to being transparent and be honest with our community and to actively and proactively share what we're doing, why we're doing it, and when we mess up, yes, we messed up, and here's how, here's why, and here's what we're doing about it. Um, it's a big thing that has been lifted up as a weakness. And then this was one that was very interesting, but constantly where people want us to be better than we are, and they want us to be the premier school district, but talk about what that means and set a course and set a direction for that that we can all get behind as a community and as employees in service of our 9,000 students. Opportunities, we've got great CTE programs. They can be better, they have to be better. The, we want a growth mindset that is honoring the things that we've done in the past but being bold to continue to make innovation and improvement. We have a foundation and it's done good things. It needs to do great things and I'm excited about where that could go. Collaboration with follow through, that we're pretty good sometimes about going out and asking people for their opinion, but not coming back to tell them why we couldn't do it, or better yet, taking that input, being authentic about it, and following those suggestions. And then innovation. Uh, we are a district of innovation, but we struggle to say what that means. And so if we're going to be a district of innovation, we should be a leader and we should be proactive in that commitment for different for the sake of being better. And there are threats, and we know one of them is a lack of competitive salaries for our truly great staff. We have fallen behind and to the point where even those individuals who love our school district, they love teaching here, they love leading here, they love driving buses, and they love uh, uh, feeding our kids. But our salaries have fallen to the point where people are starting to look. And the minute we lose those truly amazing employees of our school district is where that A district that we're very proud of starts to falter. So we have work to do there. Um, every community struggles with uh, a vocal minority, but sometimes we're a little bit overreactive to it. And we've got to do a commitment to really trying to get a sense of what do our community, what are they trying to tell us? 
where are we uh, faltering and where do we have strengths? And not just because it's the person with the loudest voice, but it's truly because we have individuals who care about our district and we have that true commitment to listening and learning. We have got to continue to do everything we can to reduce the workload and stress on our staff. It is an unprecedented year and every one of our staff members is feeling it. Every one of our staff members is being heroic and sheroic throughout it. But if we don't, uh, if we just take that for granted, then we will lose our employees. And so doing everything we can to reduce stress on our employees as they're servicing our students is of utmost importance. Number four is something we have truly struggled in terms of how to put it on paper, um, because I've heard everything from being a closed district to a good old boy district to a perception of insider culture. And, and really what has been lifted up to me as a new superintendent is that we are not transparent, that we advertise positions when we feel like advertising them, that we use a process for hiring when it's convenient, uh, that we do things for the short term without thinking about the bigger term, and that if we're gonna be the district, the premier school district in Texas, that we've got to be open. And by that, we mean that we have got to have a commitment of hiring the very best. More often than not, yes, someone with a connection with Montgomery ISD, but let's advertise the position, hire the right way, do it consistently, do it transparently. That we have a budget process that's not behind closed doors, that we go out to the community, ask for their input, share what we're learning in real time. And again, that commitment to listening, learning, and sharing. Uh, and not doing it in a way that people think that we're trying to hide something. And then the state legislation and budget. Uh, we know that when the legislature comes back in session uh, in the new year, uh, that there are gonna be some challenges. Our state is suffering uh, as our country is suffering with this pandemic and it has had an impact on the economy. And so therefore it potentially can have an impact uh, on our school district. And so we can't just wait to see what happens. Uh, as a team of eight and as a board, a legislative platform with what you want to see happen in Austin, uh, that we are a premier district taking a leadership role and, and giving voice and advocacy for our students uh, and to be not uh, 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 passive, but advocates for our school district and our students. So what does it all mean? Well, you pass goals tonight and that's exciting. Goals are important. The performance objectives that accompany those goals are important. But now the work begins on creating a strategic plan that truly will unite our community and give all of our employees a sense of direction about where we are and where we're going and why. Goal one is about our commitment to servicing every child and every child means every child. So how do we continue to get the students who are thriving in our schools to continue to thrive? How do we better serve our special education students and our gifted students? How do we commit to our great programs like CTE or gifted programs or dual language and make them even better? And how do we commit to getting every student to walk across the stage and get a diploma that's a passport for a better tomorrow? Goal two is our commitment to safety. In some ways, it's our most important priority. How do we commit to making sure that we're doing everything we can to keep our students and staff safe? And certainly in a world of COVID, we sometimes forget that there have been school shootings. And the minute that we not are diligent about that, we open ourselves up to not keeping our campuses safe. And so in December, we will present our safety audits that were just conducted. And uh, overall, that audit will be much better than the audit that was presented tonight. But there is still a challenge that we have to feel deeply each and every day. And that's not only the physical safety of our students and staff, but it's the social emotional, it's the psychological, and it is in fact what we do to keep safety during a global pandemic. Goal three is the commitment to being efficient and effective with our resources. We are gifted with a community that has chosen to support our public education system well with resources that also come from the state and the federal government. How do we ensure the effectiveness and efficiency of those resources on behalf of all of our students and our staff? Goal four is our commitment to our people. It's how we go out and make that sincere focus around hiring the very best proactively recruiting amazing people to our district. Once hired, how do we train them? How do we commit to their professional growth? How do we evaluate them fairly, transparently, and with board policy always in mind? And then how do we create a professional growth system that will really keep our great leaders here, great, keep our great employees and teachers here, and make it so that we can follow a model of when we have professional growth opportunities, we can hire 75% from within, and sometimes go outside when we need to. 
And then goal five is really about the three C's, communication, customer service, and culture. It's about making sure that our district has a strong culture, that our employees feel valued, that our parents feel heard, and our students feel welcomed and expected. It's about our commitment to proactively communicate with our community, and that means starting off with a commitment to listening and then sharing and showing that we've heard our community and customer service. You know, um, it used to be that when you moved into a school district, where you lived is where you went to school. And except if you could access private education, there was a very little competition. Well, today there's online schools, there's charter schools, there's more private schools. There's competition. And we have to earn our business in Montgomery ISD or we find ourselves losing students and we don't want to do that. So as you have passed those five goals, we are creating five task forces. Each task force will be aligned to one of those five goals. Each task force will be led by a member of my senior team and one or two of our campus principals. And each task force will have students, teachers, staff, community leaders, and parents uh, representing all 10 of our campuses. Not only will we have these task forces meeting over the next several months working on creating initiatives and strategies to create our strategic plan, but we will have town halls where we will go out into our community so anybody that wants to come give us input about goal four, how we retain and hire great teachers, or goal three, how we have efficient and effective resources for our schools, or goal one, how we commit to great instructional practices for every student, uh, will be able to come and give us that input and they will be heard. We will do this work in alignment with our budget process. We can't create a strategic plan we can't pay for. So as we do the work, and as Mr. Lynn said, we will be coming forward to this board often to share the updates on the budget process. We will be also updating the board for your guidance and your input in the creation of our strategic plan. It's important that as we present the strategic plan, we've looked at it over the next several years, and it's in sequence, it's harmonious, that one action that has to go before the first, uh, flows in that direction, then ultimately we can pay for it. What I'm excited about is the words about being the premier school district in the state of Texas. And a lot of districts, you could say that, and it would just be words. But when I look at where we are and how close we can be to that goal, it's not just words. We're uniquely situated in Montgomery to achieve that very end. We have an amazing community. They want us to be the premier school district in the state of Texas. And so what's exciting is we will honor the things that have led us to this point, but we really can paint a blank canvas for what that means and what does our community expect when we talk about being the premier school district in Texas. And so that will be the focus, but it is a journey. But I do know that it will, we will get there. We know we are the premier school district in Texas when we fulfilled our promise to be about every child, serving them with excellence and preparing them for future success.